What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Badgers. Still coming to you from the hotel rooms. You're going to see a couple different ones on this trip. But we're going to talk about all the football um, positions this year. Which ones do I think are the strongest for the 23 season? Which ones do I think are maybe going to hold this program back? We're going to talk about all that and more, plus some comments. Today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your daily, everything you need for the Wisconsin Badgers in one spot. I'm your host, as always, Ryan Herrings. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, our new sports book, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, we got some comments. Or we'll, we got some listeners already, a couple comments. This is kind of a pop-up show because I, I didn't get it out yesterday because the hotel had some Wi-Fi issues. So that's coming today. Um, I wanted to do a show um, ranking every positional group for just next year. Like We went through all the depth chart. I think we had Justin and Rajiv on potentially, and we graded what do you think of every position right now and in the future. But we didn't really just talk about next year specifically. And coming up into spring, um, and I apologize if there's some noise outside. There's there's some hotel stuff going on. So coming up into spring, I wanted to talk about every position that we have and just in the frame of next year. How do we feel about the starter next year and the immediate depth for next year? So I've got 11 positions. I broke cornerback and safety apart, so it's not just a DB position. Uh, Marty Griffin already on on the show says, you know, if you kind of pooled all the DBs, that's probably the strongest spot, especially when you revisit two or three years down the road. But I broke those spots uh, apart, Marty. And then um, I also broke apart outside linebacker, inside linebacker, offensive tackle, interior offensive line. I kept defense aligned together. So that's kind of how I broke it out. I've got 11 positions. Um, and let's start. Let's start at 11. We'll work our way up. And some of these guys, some of these positions, it's, I'm not trying to crush them. There's just a lot of questions at some spots that we don't have great answers for, right? So at 11, tight end. Listen, I like a lot of the pieces at tight end. I, I really do. We've talked about them. You know, Cundiff, it, Clay Cundiff was one of my favorite recruits in the class he came in on. I thought he was underrated, uh, but he hasn't been able to stay healthy. That's back-to-back -back years he's been out. Uh, Cam Large, Jack Pugh, JTC Greaves, uh, you know, Rucci, every one of these tight ends has questions either about their ability to stay healthy or their ability to produce as a, as a number one, number two type tight end. They have some of them have limitations. Rucci's more of just a blocker. We don't really know what JTC Greaves is yet. Um, certainly there's potential there with him. I, I like his game a lot, but we don't really know where he's at yet. So I, I, this was a position I thought they could have hit the transfer portal in. Um, I like Tucker Ashcroft coming in. I think he could play right away. But it, I think he can play right away partially because I don't think the position has a ton of depth, right? That's kind of um, – I, I really like Tucker. It's also kind of like nobody in that position can stay healthy. So tight end is my number 11 spot. Um, we're going to get into the comments too. Shell says, I think Seagree surprises people this year. I'll put that up here as well. Yeah, J, JT is a big-time athlete. Multi-sport dude, um, basketball background, track background, box people out, red zone threat. I like JT a lot. But if we're just talking specifically this year, I don't know how big that role is. But he's definitely a guy who could surprise, um, make that position a little stronger for sure. At number 10, defensive line. And you never want to be in a spot where defensive line, quarterback, offensive line are the spots you're most concerned about. But if we look at that defensive line group, tell me – if you're, if you're listening to the comments, if you're watching the show, who who on that defensive line group do you think is a guaranteed difference maker? Right? Like losing losing Keanu Benton and you're going into next year, you're probably starting Gio Paez. You're probably starting um, maybe James Thompson, Rodas Johnson, maybe Darian Varner, who I think could be a guy who really elevates his position. Potentially that's the key, right? That's the key ingredient to the mix next year, Darian Varner, the transfer. But, you know, Rick... Rodas Johnson had this one sack last year. James Thompson had two sacks last year, right? We haven't seen Gio Paez. That to me just feels like a spot that we're a, we're a year away from really addressing. Um, I think it could be pretty, it should be pretty good against the run. In my opinion, I, you know, Rodas, James Thompson, both stout dudes. I think Gio Paez is going to do well there. Certainly Jamel Howard, favorite recruit of the show. 
certainly he could come in and, and it wouldn't shock me if he played right away. It wouldn't shock me if um, Gio Paez takes a step up next year and he's he's better. But he's not going to be Keanu Benton. And I don't think there's an edge rusher there that that we look at and we're like, yeah, that dude's going to get us five sacks. That dude's going to get us six sacks. You know, if you look back at Alec James, we've talked about Alec James. But if you look back at a, a defensive end like that, a strong side defensive end, that dude gave us six sacks, you know, and I just don't see that on this defensive line. So for me, defensive line is 10th. But if I had to pick out a couple players that could elevate it, right, it's Darian Varner, it's Curtis Neal, it's Jamel Howard. And any one of those three stepping in and playing a bigger role than we thought at an impactful level, that would certainly elevate the position. Uh, number nine, I've got outside linebacker. And it's so weird, right, especially when we see the top of this, this positional list. It's so weird to see that. And then – where they're at. And then you see outside linebacker for Wisconsin at nine. And again, this is just my list. I want to be super clear, obviously, but I want to, this is my list. It doesn't make it the right list. This is just my opinion. So I want to get all the comments in here too. This is only where I'm at right now, but who's filling Nick Herbig's role. Like I'm, I'm done with the Aaron Witt train. Like he can't be healthy. And if he can, that's amazing. I'm absolutely rooting for him. It's not his fault. People have crap injury luck, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm done penciling him in as once he gets healthy he hasn't been able to be healthy for two years like and that's not just two years of missed football that's two years of missed workouts that's two years of missed reps like i'm i'm in a wait until i see it mo with aaron witt officially i probably should have been there a while ago um and then you had that group come in if you remember the really hyped group you had Caden johnson tj bowlers daryl peterson and we really expected i thought last year we expected peterson to maybe step up a little bit more he's a physical freak show but we, I don't think we saw the big jumps we needed. And I'm not confident in who's going to kind of fill that Herbig role. Like Herbig, 15 and a half tackles for loss last year, 11 sacks. Where is that coming from this year? Um, the Michigan State transfer, Petroski could be it. Can CJ Getz take another step up? Obviously, there's depth there. But it it has to. And Cannonell is is parroting what I'm, I'm trying to say right here and saying it better than I am. It has to be Johnson, Peterson, or Bowlers, 100%. And I don't think we've seen enough from those three to pencil that in. Right. For a long time at Wisconsin, we've been able to pencil in the next dude, right? Because we saw the flashes. We saw her big flash early. We saw these dudes flash early. And I don't think we've been able, we're, we can't pencil anybody in right now to that next spot. So that's why I have outside linebacker at number nine. Um, and number eight, I have cornerback. Um, so, really quick, too, as I break down this first group, you see defensive line, outside linebacker, cornerback. A lot of defensive positions in this mix for me, which is. Again, I also think this is going to be a good team. Let me let me also preface this. I think this is a good team this year. So some of these positions, even though I have them lower, I'm, I'm really high on some players inside these positions as well. So at number eight, I've got cornerback. Um, listen, Alexander Smith is one of the stars of the defense, period. No, no further context needed. But there's questions behind him, and there's questions on the other side of him. And quite frankly, I also think there's questions about how elite he really is too, right? Alexander Smith came back last year, stabilized the team, a big part in res the resurgent pass defense. Um, he's a guy Brady Collins was on the show that was the strength and conditioning coach at Wisconsin. He raved about Alexander Smith, said he's he's kind of like got a Kobe mentality about him. I love Alexander Smith. Is he a shutdown corner? There's not a lot of those, but if you have an elite defense, you probably you probably need one or one close to it. And then around him, it's just depth question marks, right? There's a lot of young pieces I like. I've talked about Avion Jones a lot. I think he's a future star. Is that future star next year? I'm not sure. You know, Max Lofi, Ricardo Holman can, can certainly take a step up. I love the recruiting class coming in. Whether whether Amari Stone plays safety or corner, not sure. Excuse me, but I love Jace Arnold. He brings elite speed to the position, you know, um, the Kluna brings that six foot long wingspan guy. You can play early as a corner too. It's not as difficult as coming in as an offensive lineman, defense lineman, quarterback, etc. You can play early as a corner. I love the the cornerback group coming in. So there's there's a lot of players here that could elevate this spot. For, but for now, if you're just looking at who are the proven pieces, there's Alexander Smith. That's it, right? That that's a little sketchy at the cornerback spot to go into a season. Um, without much more than one really proven cornerback. So I have cornerback on uh, number eight. And then coming up, we're going to talk. We'll just keep the, we'll keep it going. We're going to take a break for our friends of the show. Then we're going to get into your comments. And then we're going to talk, start getting into the, some of the positions that I'm a little higher on. And again, I want your comments on this as well. This is just my list. Doesn't make it the right one. But that's just kind of where I'm at, jotting down notes, thinking about it today. Um, but first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. I've talked about them a lot. 
um, new friends of the show, but they're not friends to, or they're not new to anyone else. They are America's number one sports book for a reason. And come Super Bowl 57 come up, coming up, get your your download the app and you get a first bet, no sweat, um, up to three thousand dollars off on your first bet or back in in um betting credit, win or lose. And if you're new to FanDuel, it's an incredible time to join up because you can see all their features for free, see all their new features, see everything that they do for the first time. And it's really incredible. Their customer service is also awesome. It gets you up and started. If you haven't done sports kind of betting or, or sports book before, FanDuel is the easiest one to jump into. Um, it's not difficult to get set up, super easy to use. And you can go same game bets, in game bets, parlays, everything you want on a sports book you can do with FanDuel. Um, a couple of the bets I've talked about. Wisconsin win win the national title plus ten thousand. I had to do it, and then I, I always bet with my heart. I've talked about this before, so I've got money on the Suns. We just got Durant. Let's go! So I'm excited about that one as well. Um, plus, the FanDuel sportsbook is is the app is safe, secure, super easy to use. Best of all, you get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com/slash/lockedon to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl Fifty Seven. That's FanDuel.com/slash/lockedon. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, let's keep going here. Let's keep rolling. Um, got your comments. Again, I'm, I'm on my laptop on travel. I, I hate trying to use that as an excuse, but it's really difficult for me to do everything on one small screen. So I'm going to go through my list, and then I'm going to come back and hit all your comments. I think that's probably the easiest way to do this, but I'm still going to ping up some comments if I see them. All right, number seven. So we went through the first chunk, and again, at all these spots, there's players that I think can elevate these positions. Uh, at seven, I have offensive tackle. And that it offensive tackle is an interesting one to me because – from a recruiting ranking standpoint, that's that's the most stacked position on the team, period, bar none, right? You have four and five stars throughout the 2D. Um, but I think we've had injury issues. You know, Malman's been hurt. We've had maybe some consistency development questions with guys like uh, Rucci, um, Trey Wedding, who I thought was a tackle, got moved inside the guard. You know, I, I think we just need to see a little more consistency and then a little more health luck here. But I think I think Nelson's a stud. Right. I think he's an NFL guy. I think Malman's probably an NFL guy if he can put us together and stay healthy. And then behind him, uh, JP Benz, I, I love his game. And I think Trey Wedding is a natural right tackle. I've said that before. I thought him getting moved on the interior last year was more of a sign of the interior weakness than the fact that that's where he should be playing. I think he is a right tackle. I think he needs to be there. We just need to see more consistency from the offensive tackle spot. So that's at number seven. And number six, I've got inside linebacker. Um, and I know people are going to disagree with this assessment. Uh, Rajiv probably will first for starters. I'm just not as high on the star power at inside linebacker, but I really like the group there. You know, I, I think that there's great depth. I think we can survive injuries there. Again, we're talking about 2023, you know, and in 2023, this is a position that can survive some injuries. There's depth. There's there's players that can step in. Um, there's players with different skill sets, but I don't know if there's a star, right? When, you, when you're thinking back to the great Badger teams, it's you know, the Cheneys and, and the Oars and the TJ Edwards. I don't know if any of these dudes have that type of ceiling. And that's a high bar, but that's that's what our great defenses have been built around, right? Um, I like Muma. I, I, I really like Cheney. I like the physical tools from Turner. Uh, Brian Sanborn is going to be really good. And then behind him, you have two young pieces. Aiden Vaughn, if you remember, um, in last year's class, was a guy Michigan went after versatile athlete, um, Tyler Jancy, I think he's a future star. I think you you can go four or five deep here. I really do. But again, does anybody think there's stars in this group? Um, and that's where I kind of have some concerns. That's maybe, that's maybe where I kind of cap that ceiling at, but I think it's a really solid group. You're going to win games with this group. They're going to they're gonna play really well against the run. I wonder a little bit about the passing game or the pass rush out of this group. Number five, let's go. Uh, quarterback. Tanner Mordecai. Now, this is a position where I think the starter is ahead of the depth, right? Mordecai coming in, established quarterback, big time numbers, um, tough kid, dual threat. He's he's kind of a stud, right? I mean, he did it at SMU. I get it, but you still have to be. And we had um, a couple guests on the show, and they were talking about it. You still have to be a really good quarterback to put up those numbers. It doesn't matter if you're in an air raid system, right? He's done it. Uh, incredible numbers for two years. I think he's a star, but what if he gets hurt? Who's who's your backup quarterback right now? That That's kind of why I liked and did a show about it. And obviously Chase Wolf is now gone. That's kind of why I like Chase Wolf coming in. It gave you at least somebody who you knew could come in in the middle of a game for a series and not, well, I don't know. 
I guess we we saw it kind of fall apart with Chase Wolf too. So maybe that's maybe there's just not one, right? Maybe there's just not a, a backup quarterback. Um, the other thing I would say though, you do have multiple quarterbacks on the roster that have been in a college system for a year, right? Braden Locke, Nick Evers, uh, Miles Burkett. So you don't have to be a sophomore or junior to play college football as a quarterback. Right? We've kind of gotten into that that mode at Wisconsin. Like if if a quarterback doesn't have multiple years, he can't play. So I think it's okay. I don't trust the depth chart, um, but Tanner Mordecai's a star. He's a, he's a great quarterback. He's an established veteran. So I think I think I have him at five. But yeah, this is where we start to split hairs. Um, at four, I've got running back. Yeah, like I and if you want to put running back lower, I get it. If you want to have it higher, I get it. Here, here's where I'm at with running back. You have one of the best players in the in the conference, one of the better running backs in the country, in Braylon Allen. If you have that, you automatically have. You, you have to be at a certain point uh, at a position. You have one of the best players in the country in Braylon Allen. You know, even with a down year last year, 1,200 plus yards, five plus yards per carry. The year before, he was at six plus yards per carry. He's going to be better in this system. I truly believe that. Ches Malouf, Malusi is a great two, right? You have one of the best one two combos in the country. But it just then becomes how much do you trust the depth behind them and how much do you trust Braylon Allen and Ches Malusi to stay healthy, right? That That's the question. You can't answer really the second part, right? Because injuries are, are partially luck. But from the depth chart, behind Braylon, behind Chez, Nate White, um, Jackson Aker potentially, Cade Yakimeli, who could be really interesting in this offense. He could, listen, Cade could be really interesting. Um, but is he ready to be really interesting this year, right? That's kind of the question. And I, I don't, we certainly don't have an answer to that. I'm hoping in spring we maybe get some whispers about how he looks because if he – if he comes along with his physical skill set and establishes establishes himself as a reliable number three, then suddenly I think you're in a really good spot at running back. The only issue with running back right now is what if one of these dudes gets hurt, which they've done for two years. But I think the star power to me puts them at number four um, on this list. So that's where I'm at. So wrapping up that segment, I got offensive tackle, inside linebacker, quarterback at five, running back at four. How nice is it, by the way? Whether you agree with my quarterback ranking or not, whether you think they should be higher or lower, how nice is it that quarterback isn't like the worst spot on the team, right? I mean, how many years would we have done this preseason list and said quarterbacks like ninth, 10th, 8th, 11th, right? It would have been a bunch of years. It's really nice to talk about quarterback and say, yeah, that might be the fifth best spot on the team next year. Maybe the fourth best, however you want to phrase it. All right, we're going to take a very quick break for friends of the show. Then we're going to come back and talk about what I think are the three top positions on the football team next year. We're going to talk about that next on Locked On Badgers. All right, appreciate everybody tuning into Locked On Badgers. Again, really do appreciate everybody kind of bearing with me on some of the technical issues as I'm recording from random hotel rooms. Um, I'm pretty pretty far south right now. So, yeah, I appreciate everybody sticking with me on that one. My number three spot, we've been talking about the top football positions on the 2023 football team for next year. Not in the future. Not who we think is the most future star, power, whatever it is. Just next year, the starters and the depth. And number three, I have interior offensive line. Listen, I think the Renfro pickup, Mordecai got all the hype. CJ Williams got all the hype. Um, and I get it, right? Those are the fancy positions. Those are the, the big-time faces of the program. I love CJ Williams. Renfro might be one of the big is one of the biggest pickups of the year. We had Brady Collins on. He raved about him, said he's born to play in the Big Ten. He's a guy who played right away. Big, physical, nasty center. And then you also brought in Joe Huber, who can play any of those three spots. And getting Renfro in allows Bordellini, who I think is maybe your best overall offensive lineman to play guard. That's his best spot. And then Michael Fertney comes back. So you have a battle-tested six-year dude in Fertney. You have Bordellini starting at one. You got Renfro starting at another. That might be your two best offensive linemen, Renfro and Bordellini. And then behind him, <clears throat> excuse me, behind him, you have Joe Bruner, who I think is a future star, played some last year, road grader. You've got uh, Dylan. You've got, uh, I'm missing one more too. <clears throat> Joe Huber is the other one I think of. So you can go like six deep here. You, know, just, you, can get, you have a complete, you have six bodies. Sorry, you can go two deep here. I think your two best offensive linemen, probably Bordellini and Renfro. Huber, super versatile, another upperclassman with that Cincinnati culture coming in. I love the interior offensive line here. I think it's really, really good. And I think it's deep. I think it's experienced. I think it's tough. I think it's going to be a very, very good part of next year's football team. So that's who I've got at number three. At number two, I'm going receiver. And similar to the quarterback conversation, y'all, 
how weird is it to say I think receiver is the second best position on this team? And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you don't think that. But even if you're lower on receiver than I am, what's the lowest you could rank this receiver group on this team right now? Fourth? Maybe you put running back ahead of them because Braylon Allen's kind of a star. Maybe, you, maybe you're much higher on inside linebacker. So maybe you put them up there. I like the lowest you could have that maybe you love Tatter Mordecai. You think he's going to win a Heisman. I mean, but the lowest you could have this receiver group that's fifth, right? And that's, that's like, if you're way low on them, I think that's incredible at Wisconsin, what Phil Longo, Luke Fickle have done in one off season, right? I think they're the potentially the best unit on the team, right? Because when you're getting up and you're ranking the, the first, second, third, fourth units, we're splitting hairs here. I think this, this unit is experienced. It's versatile. It's deep. There's a ton of different skill sets. Um, there, there's, it's going to be incredible to watch, right? You have Skylar Bell, who started to blow up next year. I think he's going to fit in incredibly well in the Phil Longo system. Rajiv loves him, had the jersey on the other day. Um, Chima DK's played, you know, he's a veteran at this point. He's really solid. You have Keontas Lewis, who averaged 16 yards a catch last year. Then you have CJ Williams coming in. You have Bryson Green, who led Oklahoma State in touchdowns. Um, that's not even getting into that young group. I think Tretch is going to play right away. Um, Vinny Anthony was able to play some last year. Then you have Quincy Burroughs coming over at since from Cincinnati, 6'2", 200 pounds, runs a 4'4". Um, Will Pauling is another Cincinnati kid, electric in the open field, gives us some of what that Aaron Crookshank we had hoped he was going to give us. So I think receiver, you have a ton of bodies. You have a, a bunch of different types of weapons, which I think is is Phil Longo's going to love that, right? Phil Longo talks all the time about adapting my offense to the players I have. Well, he's got big-bodied physical receivers. We didn't even mention Marcus Allen coming back. I don't know if he's going to – I don't even know where he would fit in at this point, but you have big-bodied physical receivers, you know, a Marcus Allen, a C.J. Williams. You have shifty, quick, slot, explosive receivers with Pauling and Tretch. You have kind of down-the-field threats with Quincy Burroughs, Keontes Lewis. You have the intermediate guys with Bryson Green, Chimre DK. It's just stacked. I, the receiver group is stacked. Uh, it's deep. It's athletic. It's it's um, There's production there. There's experience. Um, I think people are sleeping a little bit on Chimre. I, 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 I saw someone say that they think he might be the, the, the third or fourth receiver in this group. He's not going to be the fourth receiver. I don't think that at all. I think he's been, I think we saw him right away. Like his first year, this dude can play at a high level. And this offense just hasn't been able to really, ex, ex, you know, um, hasn't really been able to give any receivers or quarterbacks the ability to flourish. So I think we're going to see a big jump from Team Ray as well. I have this group at number two. At number one, that leads the safety group. You know, and I, I almost flip flop these two. But I, I love both of them. I love the impact talent at the top of both these groups. I like the young depth of both these groups. I like the versatility of both these groups. I mean, you're talking Kamoi Latu, Hunter Wohler. I think both of those players are big-time athletes, um, potential stars. I still think Amari Snowden eventually ends up at safety. And then you look at um, Braden Moore coming in. He's a four-star guy. There's just so much talent in this spot that I'm just – I think it's it's really – oh, Trayvon Blaylock is the other one that was on the tip of my tongue. You know, he's a guy who would have started last year. Now he's coming back. He's kind of a physical freak show as well. Really fast, big athlete. You know, there's you, multiple athletes here that, that you can look at and say, I think any of these players could be a potential star on this defense. And then Al Ashford could go cornerback or safety. He's another big-time athlete, the type of player that um, Luke Fickle in that defense has gone after, 6'1", you know, a 4'4 type guy. So – that's my group. That's my listing. Let me know where you think I'm too high, too low. I've got safety, receiver, interior offensive line as my top three. And then let's get into some comments here. Because, again, I, I definitely want to do that. Definitely want to get your takes. I also asked uh, Rajiv and Justin to see where they were at. So let me really quickly. Rajiv has his top three as receiver, safety, quarterback. See, I think quarterback at the top, I would agree. I worry a little bit about the quarterback depth. Um and then his bottom three is tight end, defensive line, outside linebacker. So we're pretty aligned there. I think the biggest difference he has is he's higher on quarterback. He's lower on interior offensive line than I am. And Rajiv obviously, obviously has a really good brain for this stuff too. So, yeah, again, this is just my opinion. doesn't make it the right one. Um, Shell goes with receiver number one. Yeah, I can, you can absolutely make that argument. I, I have safety a little bit higher. Um, but, yeah, I almost had receiver number one. I think you could easily go with that. Uh, let's see. Cannonell says, I think quarterback is easy. The best, the most deep position we have. Yeah. Like the, the thing with quarterback is 
a lot of schools play quarterbacks younger than Wisconsin has traditionally, right? So you very well could be right. Like Nick, you know, you have a, a obviously Tanner Mordecai, but it's it's certainly possible if you went down Evers or Braden Locke or Miles Burkett or Cole LaCrue, but probably Locke or Evers, it would be ready to step in right away and they'd be fine. And if that's the case, then quarterback might be the best spot on the team. If those dudes are ready, because there's elite talent in that room. There is a lot of blue chip pedigree in that room. And that's something we haven't had in a long time. Um, let's keep going here. Comments. Let's see. Uh, Shell also mentions, I think Seagrave surprised people this year. I agree. Corey says Ashcroft is going to make contribution early. Um, Shell says Jamel, obviously talking about Jamel Howard when we were talking about the defensive line group. I think Jamel is going to be a stud. Like that dude's going to be a monster. And I just don't know if it's going to happen this year. I think he can play though. Um, Logan Couch. Couch says, uh, I think TJ Bulge is going to go off this year. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, again, li outside linebacker is one of the spots with the most questions on the team, right? Is TJ Bowlers going to step up and fill that physical profile? Is Daryl Peterson going to become a consistent pass rusher? Is Aaron Wick going to be healthy? Is CJ Getz more than just kind of a first or second down run stopper? You know, there's a lot of questions. Can uh, Petroski, Jeff Petroski, the Michigan State transfer, can he reclaim his form from two years ago because last year he was hurt? Right. So it's just there's so many questions that outside linebacker that if a lot of those questions, if you can check yes on them, that spot's going to be really good. Right. If you can check yes on Aaron Witt is healthy, Bowler steps up, Peterson breaks out, et cetera, et cetera. That position is going to be great. But are you confident checking yes on those? I guess that's the question. Um, a couple more comments from people just saying uh, it has to be Johnson, Peterson and our Bowler stepping up this year. Uh, Melvin Melvin comes in, and says Curtis Neal is going to surprise a lot of people this year if he's healthy. I can see that. He would, Neil was a unique prospect for Wisconsin and somebody they probably wouldn't have got if he wasn't hurt. He's athletic. He's a little undersized, but he's also more disruptive than our typical interior defense alignment. So I could definitely see that one. Um, Cannon L says, what is your opinion on Al Ashford? I'm really high on him coming off. His, I love Al Ashford. Sorry. I, I didn't even read the whole comment, Cannon. I'm, I apologize. Thank you for the comment. He said, I'm really high on him coming off his injury. So I love Al Ashford because I love cornerbacks, defensive backs who are bigger than six foot. They're physically, they're big and they can run a four, four. And he checks every one of those boxes. Now missed last year with an injury. They had shifted him to safety. Now, again, the key here is that's the previous staff. A new staff is going to come in with all new eyes. And I'm fascinated to see where they put Al Ashford. I, I kind of hope they move him back to corner because that he kind of fits that Luke fickle, bigger body quarterback mentality. And again, I don't want to get too cliche here. Every Jim Leonard, also were tried to recruit bigger cornerbacks, you know, um, Deron Harrell, for example, Caesar Williams. It's not like, it's not like Luke fickle is, is breaking the mold by wanting bigger cornerbacks, but Luke fickle has had success with some bigger cornerbacks. Right. And that's, what's interesting to me. Al Ashford kind of fits that mold. I'm hopeful they move him back to cornerback. I'm super high on him. I love Al Ashford. Uh, Logan couch just says Amari Snowden. I love Amari. I, I don't know where he's going to play. A lot of people say cornerback. I still Bet you he ends up at safety only because it's incredibly rare for a 6'3 cornerback to exist on this planet, right? Those those are some of the most – you talk about valuable resources on the planet that nations go to war over, right? Oil, oil, gold, um, offshore natural gas reserves, and then 6'3 cornerbacks, right? Those are the most valuable resources on the planet. So there's just not many of them. Statistically, he's probably going to be a safety, but he can be an impact player either way. So I'm not stressing it. If he ends up as a safety, he could be an elite safety. If he ends up as a cornerback, he could be Sauce Gardner, right? So I, I'm very excited about that one. Logan Couch also says, I just want to say I'm hyped that um, Mabry Medauer is enrolling early. Yes. That dude, that dude's going to go up the recruiting rankings, by the way. He's going to be a mid to high four star. Uh, I'm very sure of that one. Let's see. Another comment from Cannonell says, Amari reminds me of Sauce. Uh, reminds me of Sauce and a less fast Tariq one. Sauce Gardner is the obvious comp, right? A, a taller cornerback, especially with the Luke Fickle connection. Um, Bob Milborn says defense without Jim Leonard raises some questions. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting transition year on defense for a lot of reasons, right? Uh, potential sh scheme shift, all new coaches. And there's a bunch of, of new players that need to step up. Like we, Trestle could get some flack here and it not really be his fault. You know what I mean? Given the standard that Wisconsin has had at defense and given what has been left to him on the defensive line, outside linebacker, cornerback depth, like there's a lot of questions on on defense that if they don't come through, could make Trestle look kind of mediocre. Uh, Marty Griffin says, let's see, speaking of FanDuel, are you still in possession of your wallet? 
<laughs> no, I, I have it actually. Um, that was a terrifying ordeal, losing my wallet in the desert uh, a day before I had to get on a military base. That was a terrifying ordeal. I do have my wallet. I'm very excited about that one. Um, Tim Olson says quarterback depth is above running back, in my opinion. Sure, I, I can absolutely see that. When you bring in Locke Evers, you bring in LaCrue, you still have uh, Miles Burkett on the roster. A running back depth is, is a question. That's a very legitimate question. Um, let's see. Cannonell says Evers has the most upside for us if Tanner goes down. He does have the most upside, but I kind of think Braden Locke is a number two this year. I'm very curious about it. Um, I think I think Braden Locke is the, the number two this year. And which, by the way, that might give him a step up to be that number. I don't know. It's going to be super interesting who the number two is this year because it's going to give them more of an opportunity to get those reps in Phil Longo's system and springboard into next year as the potential number one when Mordecai leaves. So very, very interesting about Very, very interested in that. Um, let's see. Cannon else says, I still think DK is our number one going into the year. Uh, so someone can prove otherwise. I think he's done more than any receiver on the roster. Yeah, I, I that one shocked me at all. I think people are sleeping on Chimre. If he's not the number one, he's going to be in that top three. I think Bryson Green could be the other number one. Like, I know that he doesn't have the locker room. He hasn't been in the system. Bryson Green has done really impressive things at Oklahoma State. So he could come in and be that number one. And then Marty Griffin says, I think Chim Ray's established leadership quality makes him super valuable. Agreed. Yeah, 100%. You need those culture guys, especially when those culture guys are also good football players, right? And Chim Ray checks both those boxes. Marty, I completely agree with that. Um, and that's kind of how we're going to wrap up y'all. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, we're going to, we have a couple more shows from hotels and then I'm going to be back in my normal groove. I promise. But I do appreciate all y'all so much. Thank you for tuning in the show for the comments, for the support. Let me know down the road. If you're listening to this, where you would rank your, your positional groups. If you think I'm too high, too low on somebody, I would love to discuss it and continue chopping that up on Wisconsin and let's go.